I think that what's happening in America as far as black men, black women is concerned is that there's a revolution within a revolution. We are fighting our own woman. Our woman will not allow us to emerge as black men. No. But our black women, who has been put in this role of aiding white America, white structure, incarcerating the black male, has continued doing this. She cannot live with us. It's not that we can't live with her. Are you blaming us? Are you saying that it's our fault that this happened? No, I'm not blaming. You know, Thor beat Thanos, and now he's a fat guy. Yeah, exactly. You know? He's just like <laughs> the black community what defeated. They defeated. Uh, you know, the <laughs> they, they defeated uh, white Thanos. Yeah, they yeah, they, <laughs> white yeah. Thanos. they uh they basically stopped. You know, a uh, bulk. I wouldn't say all of it, but they stopped yeah. a big majority of the oppression mm -hmm. legally, at least. And then now it's um instead of the black woman helping the black man defeat the white man, it's the black women help trying to overwhelm the black men, basically, so they can maintain their position, I guess, in the hierarchy. Like, yeah, you know. What's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the Cold Podcast. I'm Zo. And I'm Steve. And today we're gonna watch a video about black singles back in the 70s, talking about uh, relationships and relationship dynamics. And we're gonna try to tie that back to how relationship dynamics in the black community are today and see if we can find any similarities or things that might have changed over time. Yeah, so the conversation that these black folks have, basically uh, it's it covers the expectations, uh, some of the disagreements, and the, um, I guess arguments or whatever then issues that, yeah issues that Nuances. uh yeah. black single people in the dating pool in the 1970s sort of contended with and uh honestly i think that a lot of the things that they talk about almost like one-to-one -one mirror parts of the conversation from today parts of them are different but you hear a lot of like um topics that are very similar to what is currently going on like for example they do point out at a time like um, you know, the black men are like, yeah, I want my wife to, you know, be my wife. I want her to be like submissive. I want her to mm -hmm. do certain things. And you hear that a lot, you know, resoundingly throughout the black community today. But, um, yeah, so I guess we can sort of actually, before we start, so like, what is your take on like the, like if you were to give like three key bullet points on black dating today, okay. <laughs> right? What would you say? are some things we can kind of look out for to maybe compare to this video before we watch it. Yeah, uh, gotcha. Uh, uh, so uh, when, you, when you say, like, what are things about black dating, are you talking about, like, what are the expectations that people have in black dating or what, what is actually happening in black dating right now? Uh, can we do both? Okay, yeah. So I say, like, what we have right now, because there's ever since the whole... There's been a whole boom, I've noticed, and it's probably because of either Manosphere rhetoric or Red Pill rhetoric, where like a lot of black people, a lot of black podcasts are talking about relationships. And now you have this kind of um you have this kind of dichotomy happening where um, a lot of men are kind of expressing wanting more traditional values and more like kind of traditional mindsets to be with our women. And I think the rhetor the rhetoric on both sides is men want more traditional women. A lot of women have picked up on more feminine I or feminist ideals that they want out of the men where it's like, well, we've been dealing with single parenthood in the in the household because black men aren't around or black men aren't, you know, making enough money. And so you have those contentious views going at it right now, which is kind of the main narrative. And I think the product of that is that you see a lot of black, um, you still kind of see a thing where a lot, there's not that many, I'd say, very stable black relationships happening, um, at least happening long term, which is why the marriage rate still stays low. The single mother rate still is going up. And um, it doesn't seem like we're on the same page and the conversations are getting more and more contentious. Um, so it's going to be interesting, I think, to see if that was a thing that's always kind of been there or is that like a growing sentiment of things because they've changed mm -hmm. because a lot of people will say like oh i want things to be as they like they were you know back in the good old days when women were women and men were men but was it was that actually a thing back then or do people just say that without the context of realizing that that was never really the case right um yeah so i guess now that's pretty that's a pretty good foundation for it let's go ahead and see the video let's see the conversation I think that what's happening in America as far as black men, black women is concerned is that there's a revolution within a revolution. We are fighting our own woman. Our woman will not allow us to emerge as black men. No. But our black women 
who has been put in this role of aiding white America, white structure, and castrating the black male has continued doing this. She cannot live with us. It's not that we can't live with her. Are you blaming us? Are you saying that it's our fault that this happened? No, I'm not blaming black America women. I just said that I'm blaming the system. They are victims of the system like the black male. Well, why do you say that we are castrating you? You say that you want to be the leaders. Okay. Well, what about the black professional woman? Are you saying that there should be no black professional woman? Are you trying to deny black women the right to be creative, the right to function? We're not asking for you to take a back seat. We're said. saying that you have got to be astute enough and can view the situation well enough where you just automatically know what your role is and step back. And whenever you want to have that aggressive thing, this is the thing that the young black man today is not going to tolerate. My old man tolerated because he was his old man tolerated. It came about. up for years and years and years. But today, the young black man is not going to take it. He's going to be out there as a leader. White America has used black women to keep the black male in his place. And you're still aiding him by saying, well, we are qualified. We want to work. We can help. Mm. All right, so let's, there's a second part, but let's let's kind of like talk about that part first. That's interesting. So like, this it seems spitting, like man. <laughs> <laughs> it seems a lot like um, they're basically frustrated with a lot of the same things. I would say that modern black men are kind of frustrated with like yeah. that long was ago. eerily relevant. It's, it's very not that much. long ago when you think about it. It was yeah, no, you're true. Well, it's the seventies. Technically, that. you our say it's about fifty I mean, years ago, half generation. a decade. Mm -hmm. My mother was born in the seventies. This is our last draft, you know. Like that's yeah. still it's still a reach yeah. back, I think, considerably. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's uh wow. it's it's interesting to me from the um from the perspective that like I said, they're pro what they're saying mimics exactly what they're saying today. Mm -hmm. Um and the part they brought up where I think the one of the reasons why it like the black community's relationship we have with each other, like men to women, is like pretty unique. In America is because a lot of cultural groups, like even if you look at like um, European, you go to other countries like uh, Middle Eastern, uh, Asian, it's like they've always kind of had a dynamic where like the men in the co like the culture in the society was built around the men always had more power than the women. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if subjugated would be the word to say, but like there was always the expectation and the foundations of that society was built around the men worked Tradition. and the women took a more submissive role mm -hmm. of like, you know, providing and nurturing. But like in mm -hmm. in a, in America, it's like black men, black men and black women when we were like fighting, I guess to like get more equality during the civil rights era. Mm -hmm. Um there was never a point where I would say black men had a um pretty much had like a systematic like hierarchy over the women mm -hmm. like they always worked equally right and i think that kind of shows going forward with how that's created like this kind of transgression against one another where like the women we kind of compete with each other instead of working with each other because there were never really established roles mm -hmm. i'd say there probably were roles that came out naturally because when we had to make families and stuff you know the men had to work obviously the women uh, would do, um, you know, the secondary chores of, like, raising the kids and things like that. But, like, because there was never really this reinforcement in society, um, well, I guess with black society to kind of make, um, that would put men naturally above the women, we kind of did things at the same time. So it's like the men and women, like, when men worked, the women also worked. When men went to marches, the women went to the marches. Um, and I guess... It, you know, kind of what I've heard, too, it's like when the welfare state and things kind of got introduced to the community and kind of like started splitting up families, the women kind of like took up roles that the men would take. Mm -hmm. And then um, it, it almost made like our relationships with one another very contentious, which is why you see in this, the men are like, you know, why can't you guys just fall back into place and let the men be men? You know, why do you you know, why do you guys want to basically combat us and like be us? But then also expect us to rise above what you you know the level that you guys want to be at. I think um, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Like I do feel like leading up to like civil rights and then like the post civil rights era, like post Martin Luther King and everything after the civil rights laws are passed, I think that women were willing to take a more submissive role because one, um, there was less danger involved, mm -hmm. um, and two, because they actually needed the change to happen. 
right? Yeah. Like, yeah. a white man in power is not going to listen to a black man, let alone a black woman. Right. So if they wanted something to change, they would need to put the black men at the forefront mm-hmm. and then support them from the backdrop, right? Yeah. They like, would need to conform to traditional Christian values. Yeah, I agree with that. And and marriages mm-hmm. and and the nuclear household. Yeah, yeah they, they in w- order. To, sorry, it was like in order to gain acceptance in the in the culture and the system, like you had to adapt to it. Mm-hmm. And like I said, that would on all fronts. Like you have to show them, like, hey, we can be the uh, nuclear, you know, um, American dream conformed family, mm-hmm. and we're going to show you that you know we can operate professionally and in a manner that you know. Um, earns us acceptance in the culture and, and I think because of that because they were trying to prove a point and meet an expectation mm-hmm. that kind of drove people into roles but when none of that was no longer a factor where it's like okay you're free to be who you want and everyone kind of went back to their you know their state of thought where it's like I don't have anything to prove now you can act how you want to act Mm-hmm. You know, I think yeah, that it's, brings it's, you back it's, to it's where like, you're at. It's like, you know, Thor beat Thanos, and now he's a fat guy. Yeah, exactly. You know? he's it's just like <laughs> the black community what defeated, they defeated, uh, <laughs> you know, the... Uh, they, they defeated uh, white Thanos. Yeah, they... <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> the white yeah. Thanos. They, uh, they basically stopped, you know, a bulk... I wouldn't say all of it, but they stopped yeah. the big majority of the oppression, mm-hmm. legally at least. And then now it's... Um, instead of the black woman helping the black man defeat the white man... It's the black women help trying to overwhelm the black men, basically, so they can maintain their position, I guess, in the hierarchy. Like, yeah. you know, like, okay, well, we've had enough of being below white men and black men, so if we can at least get even with black men, like, you know, she was saying, like, what about the black professional woman? It's mm-hmm. like, you know, okay, there can be some black professional women, but um, a lot of these men, especially at this time, probably think, like, well, you know, the way society is set up, um, a black professional woman might make some money. She might have a decent career. She might get some self fulfillment. But as a community, um, does your paycheck equate uh, to the same value as being like the matriarch of a family? I guess you mm-hmm. know. And I think that holds up today because there's a lot of people that would cl- that would argue like, well, today there's so many opportunities. Like most jobs aren't physical labor. Uh, women can work. Obviously, women can have careers. And it, to do so, they will delay having a family, mm-hmm. right? So the trade-off isn't as... Um, it's not as stark as it was back then because, like, you're not going to... Back then, you're not going to find a bunch of women who are working at the steel mill, you know, making a bunch of money because, obviously, education was limited at this point. Mm-hmm. And I think education is the main pathway that women take to exceed men, in career fields, right? Like today, yeah. the modern day, a woman is going to go get a master's degree and a black man is not going to get a, black, a master's degree just because women typically are more capable of excelling in school, from what I understand. Yeah, I think um, um, more women in general just uh, uh, complete school or are enrolled in school than men, like across the racial um, sphere. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know there's research that's done that it, a lot of it is because a lot of the school system and how it teaches favors how women learn versus how men learn mm-hmm. and um, like I'm, disillusions is it like what men are like more practical learners and women are more so well it, it's it's that but like um it i think it's like men tend to be more active learners where women are more like that's um, what i meant active yeah learning. like more docile like because a lot of school teachers like they teach on a, a guidance of like submission and conformity mm-hmm. where it's like if you're young you got to sit still you got to like you know look at the board and you got to listen to lectures and stuff like that and a lot more women Uh, or women in general just learn more so in like that kind of sedentary learning style where uh, men tend to be more active learners. Mm -hmm. And some of that's reflected in how you see kids interact at recess where like the boys will like start running around and they'll like get all that energy out and be more active. And, you know, they get a lot of social learning from those like dynamic interactions Mm -hmm. where it's like even when made to be dynamic, you'll notice that women will still choose to like sit in circles outside and talk. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think that's another thing where, like, the school system's learning style usually favors girls, which is why girls are more amped to stick with it, and guys tend to, like, leave it after a certain point when they get the option. Right. And then I think, like, uh, basically another thing he brought up was aggression, like uh, black female aggression. I'm not saying all black women are aggressive or anything like that, but uh, you'll notice uh, when a black woman is aggressive... Uh, it's very <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's very, uh, it's very, it's very, very noticeable, I guess. It's, like, definitely, like... <laughs> Um, 
I would say more often than not, you will find aggression from black women, especially when you are dating them. Yeah. Um, and I, was, I think that, I mean, let me just real quick. Yeah. I think there's like a, a chain of events, right? Like kind of similar to what I was saying, like, you know, they defeated Thanos and now they're infighting. I think it's kind of like the black women had all this pent up aggression, obviously, from the oppression and trauma and everything like that. So they can vent that oppression in probably one of three ways. I don't know the third one. I would say the first potential way is they can vent that aggression and trauma into their children. Mm -hmm. They're probably not going to do that. (laughs) But they've identified that their man is strong enough, um, especially in this age where, like, you know, therapy and psychology were brand new concepts, basically. Uh, They've identified that their mate, their husband or their boyfriend or their baby daddy or whatever in the situation, they've identified that if I get with the man he should be strong enough to I, to take my aggression, to like deal with me basically being aggressive and because it has to go somewhere. So I'm gonna instead of putting it on the kids, which some of them a lot of them did, mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna put it on the man. But the funny thing about that is the woman will try to spare the children and she will attack the husband or the the, the father. Uh, and then the father has no outlet. He can either go attack white people, rob them, steal, whatever, attack other black people, <laughs> rob them, steal from them, or kill them, or whatever. Or he can try to be as, uh, as uh, he can try to basically, he can basically try to fit into society as best he can while dealing with all this negative, negative emotion and trauma and conform. things like that. He can try to conform, but once again, the same way the woman needs an outlet, she actually gets one. It's not the best outlet. Um, but the man, his outlet becomes the kids. So yeah, she, she tried to protect the kids, I can only imagine. but now the dad's going to fuck the kids up instead, which is arguably worse. I can only mm. imagine how difficult the perspective of a, of a growing black household would be with the government's views and, and, and current objectives at this point in time and also the second wave of feminism clashing at this point of time. Yeah. Like how like how radical every change was for for women, it was hitting tenfold for the black woman. What's funny to me it's is uh, I think one of the biggest issues that's um, I think plaguing the black community right now is um, I think a lot of especially when it comes to feminism. I think feminism because you know that a lot of like secondary movements tend to kind of like hijack. Or yeah. try to like use Just latch on like a parasite. Yeah, they try to like you know latch on to or like use black people as like a prop in whatever movement. You know, um, whether like it's an issue like um, if you're talking about LGBT rights, they really try to you know anchor incorporate it. like anchor themselves into like the whole civil rights thing and try to get black people to agree with them on that. Whether it's like anything, even as like far out as like immigration, mm-hmm. you know, legal immigration, it's like they want us to like support that. Um, and feminism did the same thing, but for black women, and black women really ate that up. I noticed. Yeah. Because uh, if you, even if you look on like the feminist Instagram page, it's almost been taken over by the idea of intersectional feminine, uh, intersectional feminism, mm-hmm. which is just the idea that like feminism misses like people of color mm-hmm. in the in this conversation. But like, it's almost become synonymous with like you know a black woman uh, or like a woman of color in general like right. you know like women aren't what's important black women are what's important yeah or like <laughs> i don't ever see that thing where it says like um people say like black trans uh, uh, uh trans female women or something that, that was like a really big talking point at yeah one point. like uh like getting every getting all of that in there like they're just trying to take it all in one and like collectively like you know Super build an army door. from it there's like a good example obviously uh, i don't think we should play it but uh there's like you guys know who uh chris cuomo is yeah and then there was like was it andrew cuomo it was like his brother it was like the mayor of new york yeah and okay. when he's like trying to defend himself from like some assault charges or something he goes up on the podium and he's like i am black i am gay i am a woman and he's like basically <laughs> like he's like basically saying like he represents all of the people in new york right, right. And he's like he's that's kind of like the same Thing. It's like you just package them all together and it's like you guys love all these things, right? Yeah. Well, I'm all of them, even though I'm what, a white what guy. Is it I am yeah. marginalized. <laughs> <laughs> I am as marginalized as you. Yeah. He went with the Wookiee theory on that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's funny that because it's like if you think about it, every group it, it basically tries to latch on um to I guess what really started with black people fighting for civil rights to where it's like now it's just people of color. Mm-hmm. And essentially, it's like you can I, you can basically identify as an oppressed group as long as you're not white, you know, yeah. a white man, exactly, to be exact. <laughs> you know, even if you're just a white woman, you still have like victim privilege. 
Yeah, there was a uh, there was a there's a Joe Rogan guest, Coleman Hughes. Uh, obviously, he's more than a Joe Rogan guest, but he was on Joe Rogan recently. He was on The View, and he has this book View. called uh, "Removing." It's like something like, uh, re- like a colorblind America. It's like basically mm-hmm. instead of using race racial statistics to identify who gets like welfare, who gets different you know assistance and aid, they should just use socioeconomic status like. Mm-hmm. Why does being black automatically mean that you are poor, right? Why does being Mexican automatically mean that you're poor? Yeah, why does being black mean you automatically grew up in the hood? Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's it's because harmful the, stigmas that that are meant to oppress us and hold us where we are. Right, but would being told that you're black and poor help you more than just being told you're poor and we will help you? You know, mm-hmm. like okay, well you're black, so that means you're more likely to be poor because like certain programs they don't care if you're actually poor; they care if you're black. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're getting help that could have went to an actual poor person that needed the help. A black, white, or Mexican, whatever race you are. White dude in Alabama. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. race was like invented, which is the craziest part of that. It it is kind of funny how, like, we subconsciously, like, just, like, um, we almost lump ourselves into a category of, like, uh, you know, things that we don't want to be associated with, but we repeat it so much in our day-to-day lives, you don't even realize that you're reinforcing those stereotypes. Like, if someone... If you're in a conversation about social dynamics and how hard it is growing up and someone says like, well, I should I know all about like difficulty growing up because, you know, I I grew up black. It's like, you know what that means. (laughs) But if you think about it, it's kind of funny that like inherently your connotation of saying I'm black means I you know, I grew up poor, uh, discriminated against with no privileges at all. And probably from a low income family, like it's like you're basically saying all that just by saying you're black, and most people immediately know that's what you're saying. Mm-hmm. And then some white people, especially, like get uncomfortable when you do that. And people actually started calling me out for that when I was in Thailand because I'd be like <laughs> hanging out with like Europeans <laughs> and Canadians. They're like, stop, stop. And like, if you yeah. ever associated anything with being well, black, black, they'd be like, well, hey, I do that too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Like, or you'd be, or you say something like, um, uh, like I used to like sarcastically say something like, like I oh man I love watermelon it's probably well, I wouldn't say it like this but it was like oh I love <laughs> watermelon uh, then I would make I would I would make my own self inflicted black joke and, and they'd be like, like I like watermelon too yeah. it's like not cool man bad Steve yeah but no I get why you do it because I mean a lot of like early black comics kind of did that same shtick like yeah. Yeah. Chris Rock was you know kind of doing that. For the longest time, I didn't do that on stage. I did that like in like can't, literal just, conversations. Oh, just in life, okay. Yeah, like <laughs> I just do it in conversations. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd be, oh, I, here's here's how I'd probably frame. I say like like they'd be like, "Hey, you want some watermelon?" I'd be like, "I'm black. I love watermelon." Yeah. Yeah. And they'd be like, "What do you mean? I, I like watermelon too." No, that's like, right. I don't get it, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like a lot of those like stereotypes yeah. and stuff. They're specifically American. Yeah, I can see why that you would do sense. that though, because I know like in America and in cer- certain circles, especially <laughs> if you go into like mostly white neighborhoods. Uh, uh, the easiest way to ingratiate yourself a lot of times in those circles is to just kind of like break the race barrier right there. Yeah. Just be like, hey guys, just let you know I'm one of those black guys that's kind of cool with laughing at myself. Like, yeah, I get it. I'm black. Yeah. I had chicken before <laughs> I came here. You know, and then they kind of cause, all laugh together now. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. uh-huh. yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm literally, uh, when I was in college pro with Leezy, I remember I was at a. Tr- <laughs> 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 I, uh, I was at, bro, I was, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do some more bonks because I was at a training session. And uh, it was like all the guys uh, in the training session were like drinking in one of the rooms. There's like literally like 10 people were playing cards and stuff. Um, and uh, I remember I like pressured everyone in there to call me the N word. <laughs> <laughs> this is NIU? No, this well, this is while I was at NIU, but it was a, this was a college pro painters when I was painting. <laughs> what the and this, heck, this is all the other trainees. Baby. I was the only black guy there, Why? and I thought it was <laughs> hilarious to get them to say it. <laughs> did, <laughs> any of them, did you get anyone? Hell, did all they of say them. it? You got all of them. Got all them. All all of a bunch of drunk white dudes told <laughs> to say oh, the N word. Yeah. I mean, at that point, but it was funny. It was outnumbered. I was, it's, not, it's not like they were like, oh, you dirty N-word. It was, like, yeah. you know, it was funny. It was funny because they... Did anything like, it was funny because it? You got to think about the, the situation because it's, it's like funny. pressuring <laughs> it's them into funny. doing it funny, is right? actually hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do it today, but back How, then, that's that was like hilarious. a reverse Uno card. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's always funny. Like, come on, what are you, reverse Uno, you didn't see that coming. Like, what are you, scared? You didn't see that coming. I'm going to beat you up. One of them would have came. They would have been like, ha-ha, nigger. Yeah. Yeah. But it uh but yeah no I uh, that that dynamic I uh, definitely exists. Um What's going on Cold Pop fam? If you guys found this episode interesting, we will be continuing it because the episode was very long, about an hour and 30 minutes. 
uh, after we've released all three segments, we will release the entire episode as a single video and podcast. But in the for the time being, uh, please look forward to parts one, two, and three of our conversation about black women and black men based on this video of people in the 70s.